in chapter six, we want to expand our ideas of probability a little bit further. In particular, we want to look at discrete probability distributions. Now, if the word discrete's kind of ringing a little bell in your head, that's because you've seen that before, because it's related to discrete data that we learned about back in chapter one, section 1.1, as a matter of fact, because it's contrasted with continuous data. So these are random variables, however, they're related to the data that we were talking about back in chapter one. They're not exactly the same thing because these will be random variables. They'll be numerical measures of the outcome of a probability experiment. So they're numerical, of course, so they're quantitative because that's all we're working with in this particular chapter. And then in chapters five and six, of course, we're working with discrete random variables. So that's a random variable that can take on a finite or countable number of values. Remember, countable doesn't mean that it is not infinite. Sorry, let me put it this way. Countable can be infinite. So the counting number, zero, one, two, going on to forever, is technically countable. The integers are countable. Uh, the whole numbers are countable. The natural numbers are countable. All of those numbers are countable. So it can be infinite, or it could be finite, meaning there's only you know 20 options or 50 options, and that's it. So for example, shoe size is finite. All right. So as opposed to continuous random variables, which we are going to work with a lot. So after this section's over, we're going to focus almost entirely on continuous random variables. Or I said this chapter is over. We will focus almost entirely on continuous random variables, which are random variables that can take on infinitely many values within an interval. If you'll remember, these are the ones that are measured because that definition portion is still true. And these are the ones that are counted. How does it look in terms of graph form? Well, these are both probability distributions, both of them. This is one that we're going to be working with later in this chapter in section 6.2 because it's binomial. But you can see either you have a 4 or a 5 or a 6 or a 7. There's no decimals here, right? The probabilities are decimals, but that's not really relevant to whether this is a discrete a random variable or discrete probability distribution. It has to do with the values here on the x-axis, which are whole numbers counted. Whereas here, it could be anything from 1 to 2. It could be 1.3, 1.4, 1.453, things like that. All right, so we're going to take a second just to remind ourselves of the difference between discrete and continuous. This is technically review a little bit from section 1.1. All right, the number that comes up on a 20-sided die. Hmm. Well, as you can see, it's a whole number, so therefore it's discrete. The weight of that die is continuous, right? Because I could get more decimal places if I have a better scale. The height of NBA players on a team would be continuous. And it's not because they're getting taller or shorter or anything like that. What it means is if I could get a better measuring tape, if I have a more fine tool fine-tuned measuring tool, then I could get more decimal places. So a player's not really six foot one, they're six foot one inch, point zero one three four five six two inches, right? The weight of a backpack, again, something you measure, it would be continuous. The number of songs on your cell phone would be discrete, but the length of time of those songs is continuous. Stopwatch time is always continuous because you can always have more decimal places for time if you just have a better stopwatch. Now we could see a little bit in this picture right here that you can do something that is similar to what we did in chapter two. You can make a histogram, right? So you can make a probability histogram, which is what we were just looking at. So a histogram where the horizontal axis corresponds to the value of the random variable and the vertical axis represents the probability of each value. So let's look at an example here. The NBA Finals is a best of seven series. The following table shows the number of games that have been played in every NBA Finals from 1947 to 2019. And the following is that frequency distribution of that data, which is a repeat. I don't have to say that. I will remove that for later. Now we want to find the probability here. Hmm. Okay, so the probabilities, what we need to do is we need to find the total for the number of NBA Finals series that have happened. They determine the, the big winners in the NBA. So I'm going to add 9 plus 18 plus 27 plus 19. And I get a total of 73 here. So then to find the probability of each of these individual 
areas, I would take 9 and divide it by 73, 18 and divide it by 73, 27 and divide it by 73, and 19 and divide it by 73. Now, you don't technically have to show the fraction. Um, if you want, you can just do it as a decimal instead. So you can either do it as a fraction or a decimal. Either way will be fine. So if I take 9 divided by 73, 18 divided by 73, 27 divided by 73, and 19 divided by 73. Yes, you could do this in stat crunch as well. Uh, we've seen that before. And I can show it to you again. Because it's a little bit trickier in stat crunch. Ooh, that one's an interesting rounding on that third one. Because if you're going to go three decimal places, that would round to 370. Because the 8 rounds the 9 up, and then that 9 falls over into the 6, so it becomes 370. And this is 0 0.260. Out of curiosity, if I add those decimals... I get one. Lovely. It wouldn't have bothered me that much if I had gotten, you know, 0.99 or 0.999. That that would be pretty typical. Not 0 0.99. 0 0.999. If you end up off in the, the decimal place that you rounded, that's a rounding error. Now I'm going to show you this in StatCrunch, just as a little reminder. This particular data set is available, so if you go into StatCrunch and look up MAT 133, NBA Finals, you should be able to find it. All right, so I want to go to data, and I want to compute from an expression, and I have to build this expression. So I want it to round to, say, three decimal places. So I'm going to think ahead and choose the round feature. So round two, and then I want it to round the count divided by, so I'm going to hit the division bar, the sum of the counts. There we go. So that'll take each of the individual counts and divide them by the sum of that count, which was 73 for our purposes. And then, oop, not there. I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> there, I had to hit backspace and then move over and then type 3. That'll tell it to do three decimal places. So I'll say OK and click Compute. And there they are. They didn't end up in the P of X column, but that's okay. So 0 0.123, 0 0.247, 0 0.370, and 260, just like we found when we did it with the calculator. So either way you want to do it. Now you'll notice those are the same values that are used here in this probability histogram. And I left these blank down here because we have to title them. This is the number of games in the NBA Finals. And over here, what we must be doing is the count. But it can't possibly be the whole number count, so that's not going to work because that tallest bar would be at 27, and it's way higher than that. What it's at is 37 because, of course, that's the probability. So this over here is the probability. So I had to tilt that that way. If you wanted, you could even label each of the bars. This is 0.123, this is 0.247, this is 0 0.370, and this was 0 0.260. Those are the heights of those bars. And you can see that this last one's just a touch higher than 0 0.247. Right. All right, what would the area of the four bars add up to? Well, what would the sum of these four probabilities be? Well, we already found that. It should be 1, right? It's a probability distribution, so they would have to add to 1, which was 100%. It would have to. Now, the shape of this distribution, eh, it's a little touch and go here, but I would say it's skewed left because of the sweep here. If you sweep a team, it means you won all four games. They never won a game on you, which, as you can see, it's not unusual, but it doesn't happen as often as these other ones. So it's skewed left. I'm going to add in just a little question here, which I'd like to ask, just as a little review question, which is, what type of probability are we finding here? Ah, well, the relative frequency type of probability is empirical, because it's from data. All right, and then the kicker, why is this a discrete probability distribution? 
We know it's a probability distribution because it adds up to one, but why is it discrete? And it has to do with the number of games, right? This x-axis right here, these numbers right here, they're your answer for down here, right? Because the number of games, which is your x variable, can only be whole numbers. In other words, you cannot play in the NBA Finals, you cannot play, oh, I don't know, 5.21473 games. Right? That's not possible. <laughs> and so therefore, it has to be discrete, have to be whole numbers. Decimals are not possible for this particular type of data.